So John, when it comes to the post-M chemistry, what are we generally finding there within the survey? Well, from those 197, roughly a half, I've got some uh, resistance, clear resistance to, to one or other of the post ends that we looked at. These surveys, I think it's really important. I mean, we've talked about this before. When, you know, when we did that much smaller little sample a few years ago, we found, I think it was 75% had resistance to panoxidin and about two thirds to ALS. When you do a little bit more of a random survey, that drops down to about half, have some form. What's the background level? It's hard to say, but obviously these surveys are always going to be a little bit biased. Mm. And were we kind of finding in ryegrass, similar to what we are in blackgrass, that there's almost a set sequence of resistance from ACC to ALS to then on to residual chemistry, or is it totally different? Not at all, it's completely different. So we, we do seem to have this kind of mindset, probably from the experience with blackgrass, that in an individual farm, resistance progresses in a set. Uh, sequence so you have ACCA's problems and then you have ALS problems and then maybe eventually you might see an issue with flufenoset but in the survey we saw all possible combinations populations which are entirely sensitive to both contacts but have got a significant reduction in sensitivity to flufenoset and all other possible combinations so it's really important for growers to understand that that through some sort of complicated selection process, they could have selected for any resistance trait independently.